much. Um, hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us today, um, and welcome to the SDS Information Literacy Committee chat. Our presenter today is Christina Caminita, and she is the Head of Resource and Instruction Services at LSU Libraries. She was named an ALA Emerging Leader in 2013. She is also an active member of the United States Agricultural Information Network, or USAIN, and has served on committees with ACRL's Science and Technology section. She'll be leading our discussion today on supporting NSF grants, grant proposals, <laughs> the broader impact statement. Um, so thank you, Christina, and take it away. Thank you so much, Kristen. Um, I want to thank you all for joining me today to talk about supporting NSF grant proposals and particularly focusing on the broader impact statement. So with those introductions, I would like to ask the group a few questions. So who includes grant support as part of their duties and responsibilities for faculty and students? And you can go ahead and type your responses in the chat box within Adobe Connect. Okay, it looks like a few of you are responding that you do or you kind of do, um, that it's not currently a duty, but it's something that you'd like to be able to assist researchers with, and that some of the things you do are tracking publications from the grant. So my next question um, is for those of you who do provide grant support, what types of support do you provide for researchers? And some examples include data management plan support, data storage support, literature review assistance. Um, one of you has already mentioned tracking publications from the grant. Uh, what types of activities are you usually involved with when it comes to getting a grant proposal together or doing reporting on the results of a grant or the outcomes of a grant um, after it's been awarded? I see data management um, planning listed. Okay, very good. And for those of you who have done some grant support, how many of you have specifically assisted with NSF grant proposals? Okay, very quiet about this. I myself have not assisted specifically with a proposal. And then the last question is, who is familiar with the broader impact criterion? If you've heard of it or know what it is, how did you learn about it? Indirectly, <laughs> okay, and some people don't know what it is, okay. Well, this is great because I am going to provide you with some information um, that may be useful to you as you get requests from faculty and graduate students who are getting NSF grant proposals together. Um, the NSF grant proposal process is a long one. It can also be quite challenging for researchers, particularly with regard to this broader impact criterion, which is also known as the broader impact statement or broader impact plans. Um, throughout the presentation, throughout the webinar, I may be using those three terms. Um, you know, they all mean the same thing. It's just the broader impact section that needs to be addressed in an NSF um, grant proposal. So, NSF grants have two review criteria. Researchers are reviewed on the potential intellectual merit of their grant proposal, 
and they're also reviewed on the potential broader impacts of the grant proposal. And so it's about a 50-50 split on these two items um, on a grant proposal as it's being reviewed. Researchers usually have no issue at all addressing the intellectual merit of a grant proposal. And this is where they describe you know, how their research is going to contribute to the scholarly discipline in which they participate, um, how they are going to contribute to the scholarly conversation. It's easy for them to address the intellectual merit part um, of the grant proposal because this is what they do every day. This is what they've been trained to do. They research, they report their research, and they're re largely reporting their research through traditional scholarly communication channels to other researchers within their field. So their target audience for the intellectual merit portion of the grant proposal are other scientific researchers, other specialists in their field. Broader impacts present researchers with a number of challenges. It's quite understandable when you realize how researchers are trained and how they operate at their institutions. So the broader impact statement itself has been part of the NSF proposal evaluation process since the 60s. And the broader impact criterion was formalized in 1997 as a proposal review requirement. And the specific rationale for the broader impact criterion goes back to this idea of the public supporting the research work of scientists. The public should be benefiting from this research in a direct way. So the broader impact criterion requires researchers to show that their work extends beyond the lab or beyond the field or the classroom into communities and industries. And it contributes to this idea of the larger um, community benefiting from their subsidized research. And there's this great quote um, that I pulled from an NSF report published in 2014 uh, from Franz Cordova, who is the director of NSF. And she says, not enough of our fellow citizens understand how relevant the research conducted is to their daily lives. We need to engage the public in order to help improve the understanding of the value of basic research and why our projects are worthy of investment. So challenges addressing the broader impact statement include the fact that there is no widely used standardized framework or best practice for designing, implementing, and evaluating broader impact plans. Later on in the presentation, I'm going to show you a research, um, I mean, I'm going to show you, you a resource um, designed by the National Association for Broader Impacts, which has developed a standardized framework um, for people trying to design uh, broader impact plans. But right now, there is no widely used standardized framework. And so it's very difficult for both evaluators as well as grant proposal writers to draft effective broader impact statements. Um, another issue is that examples of broader impact plans and activities are not widely available. Um, if you go to the NSF site and you search for a grant proposal, an awarded grant proposal by grant number, you will find, you know, portions of the intellectual merit statement, um, you will find, of course, the scientists' names um, associated with um, the awarded funded project. Um, you will find, you know, lists of publications um, that have come out of a particular grant. But you're usually not going to find information about the broader impact planning. And so there are no widely available models out there. Of course, individual researchers could contact other researchers who've been awarded NSF grants to ask them directly what their broader impact plans were. But I really have no idea how common that practice is and how welcome that practice is within the scientific community. Another challenge for researchers is just a lack of knowledge of effective communication strategies when developing broader impact plans. Again, it goes back to that idea of scientists usually writing for and presenting to other scientists. They're not presenting usually to the public, and they have difficulty translating how their work directly 
affects or benefits the public. And so within this you know, larger challenge of a lack of effective communication strategy, um, there have been some specific things that have been identified that researchers need more training on and just need to learn how to do um, from the ground up. They need you know, support in identifying and targeting appropriate audiences for broader impact plans. They also need to be coached on how to disseminate their research um, in appropriate channels for appropriate audiences. They usually do not address how research can empower a specific audience. They do not have a lot of experience um, both encouraging on ongoing contact with the audience that they have targeted for their broader impact plans, and they don't know how to effectively gather feedback from communities that they do work with in their broader impact plans and then take that feedback and use it to improve future activity planning. And then they also have um, challenges connecting activities to the direct experiences, identities, and principles of a specific audience. And this is normal. You know, our researchers are not trained to be science communicators. Um, they are not really trained um, in many ways to interact broadly outside of their scientific communities. And so engaging with the target communities that they have selected for their broader impact plans is just something that they need a lot of coaching on. And the script article that I um, sent out for you guys to read prior to the presentation had a really excellent quote relating to this um, lack of lack of effective communication between scientists and the public. The widespread notion among scientists that simply providing scientific information will change public opinions or help the public solve environmental problems remains a fallacy that undermines the very mission of the broader impact criterion. So it is a noted challenge. Other challenges for researchers include lack of knowledge of appropriate assessment and evaluation methods for broader impact activities that assume behavior changes or increases in scientific knowledge. Difficulty identifying partners that can offset researcher knowledge gaps and lack of experience in doing outreach. So as researchers work on their broader impact plans, they can use the NSF guidelines to give them some guidance about what to target. And there are nine areas that NSF recommends um, broader impact plans address. And those nine areas are the full participation of women, persons with disabilities, and underrepresented, mi underrepresented minorities in STEM, improved STEM education and educator development at any level, increased public scientific literacy and public engagement with science and technology, enhanced infrastructure for research and education, development of a diverse, globally competitive STEM workforce, increased partnerships between academia, industry, and others, improved national security, increased economic competitiveness of the United States, and improved well-being of individuals and society. So those nine areas are broad. You can imagine the multitude of audiences that there are nine areas, um, that those nine areas can address. But they do give researchers something to shoot for as they're coming up with these plans um, as they write their larger grant proposals. So before we go into the next part of the presentation, does anybody have any questions or would like anything clarified? Okay, 
So I will go into my next set of questions. And again, um, you can go ahead and type your responses into the chat box in Adobe Connect. Have faculty or graduate students approached you with questions about the broader impact criterion or statement as they prepare their proposals? And if you have gotten questions, what are some examples of those questions? And I see that some are responding that they haven't gotten any questions yet. Um, and someone has written that there was a group of faculty who started discussing it on their own and then reached out to libraries for help with it. Okay, good. And that there's a group working on developing a web page with resources on the topic. Okay, great. So speaking from my own experience, I have not been directly contacted with specific questions about the broader impact statement. Um, my foray into looking at the broader impact statement um, was actually at a faculty workshop I was leading for new science um, faculty here at the university. And this discussion of the broader impact statement just came up very, very casually. And it was brought up by a new scientist, I believe, in the physics department who said he was going to be working on an NSF grant and that he had to address this broader impact statement and he had no idea what it was and that, you know, he was expected to provide information about reaching out to groups he was normally not in contact with and he had no idea where to start. And that was the first time I'd ever heard of the broader impact criterion. And I've been working in or working at a research library for almost nine years. Um, so I'm not surprised that there's not a lot of reporting from the group that you haven't been approached by faculty members um, for assistance with the broader impact criterion. Uh, libraries right now just don't seem to be a place where scientists go to get that sort of guidance or that sort of information. Um, but I think we can change that, and I think we do have a lot to offer. Okay. So for those of you who did good questions or were approached by faculty, how are you able to support or assist them? And the follow-up question to that would be, what challenges do you, did you encounter as you worked to assist researchers who may have reached out to you?
Okay, so some of the comments um, mentioned that faculty approached and contact information for people to potentially work with um, on broader impact um, statements would be helpful. And then the follow-up comment was, I don't know if we've started gathering that information, but I'm guessing it could be a bit challenging or at least time consuming. So good comments. Um, this idea of connecting researchers with, you know, possible collaboration partners is something that I'm exploring here at LSU Libraries um, with a number of science faculty. And then the gathering of the information, um, it's a bit time consuming, but not as time consuming as you would assume it to be. Um, I think when we start exploring the full interdisciplinary potential of the broader impact statement, it will give you some ideas of how you can identify resources that may be useful to researchers. So this leads me to my big question. So what can librarians do to support development of the broader impact statements and plans? You know, at the beginning of the presentation, we mentioned um, that we are supporting grant development in general with our data management planning um, support, probably data storage at some of our institutions within our institutional repository, tracking publications that come out of grants. Um, based on the information that I've shared with you so far, do you have any ideas, you know, just off the top of your heads about what you can do as a librarian to support faculty who may reach out to you for assistance with broader impact statement development? For those of you who may have just joined us or joined us in the last few minutes, you can type your responses in the chat box. Okay, um, so a question from Nisha. Hi, Nisha. Um, if you were looking for collaborators, would you use something like ResearchGate or Researcher ID as these products claim that they are good for? Um, good question and not something that I had considered um, in just possibilities about how we could support researchers. Um, I think adoption of Researcher ID uh, you know, and promoting it and making sure that, you know, researchers are aware of what it does. Um, it's always a good thing when they're looking for collaborative partners. But it still kind of keeps it narrow to scientists. Um, I'm thinking bigger. And then there's another comment here. It says, I think we see um, projects in the bigger context. We can help bring other collaborators into projects or participate ourselves. And that's kind of where I'm getting at. So here are some things that I came up with um, just in my reading and trying to get a handle on some of the challenges that scientists and researchers generally have when developing these broader impact plans. So we as librarians can provide recommendations to science researchers based on our knowledge of interdisciplinary research and scholarly communications among and across disciplines. I think it's one of our biggest strengths as librarians. Um, we do not have sort of the, the siloed monovision that our, our academic research-focused peers have. 
um, you know, they can devote all of their effort and invest all of their effort into their very important scientific work. We can watch what's going on at the rest of the university and make connections among parts that at times wouldn't necessarily work together or think about working together. We can help break down those disciplinary silos. And the way that we can do that is, you know, just with our understanding of how scholarly communication happens across disciplines or among disciplines and how interdisciplinary research happens. We can also connect science researchers to other disciplines that they're not even aware of or even think of that can inform the development of their broader impact activities. And I think the two biggest examples I can um, offer for this particular you know, proposal of mine is number one, connecting science researchers with education researchers who focus on science education. Um, and the reason why they're good fits for broader impact planning is that those science educators know how to assess outreach. They know how to assess programming that target specific audiences that are specifically listed as the targets for a broader impact plan. Um, so, you know, any K through 12 effort um, to increase participation in STEM among underrepresented groups, those education researchers are going to be able to assist science researchers in showing them how to assess to assess that programming. And not only showing them how to assess that programming, but also backwards designing their programming, coming up with outcomes, and then designing all of the activities to support those outcomes. The second example, um, and this is particularly useful to those of you who are at land grants, is connecting your basic science researchers to your researchers in agriculture. You have research stations and you have extension programs at your land grant who have been doing this broader impact programming since the passage of the Smith-Lever Act in 1914. They have over 100 years of developing programming for you know, a multitude of audiences to show how agriculture research done at the university directly impacts the public. So connecting your basic science researchers with your agriculture researchers at a land grant institution, I think is just something that just needs to happen. Um, it leverages the specialized knowledge of both academic groups, of both researcher groups. Um, and since there is so much focus placed on collaboration when reviewing NSF grants, um, that will also increase the odds of grants being awarded to a particular institution. Other things we can do include coordinate training across disciplines in collaboration with our subject special librarians to introduce science researchers to institutional units and programs that may be candidates for partnering. Um, here at LSU, we have a center for K through 12 STEM education. Um, it is an interdisciplinary unit. It always has been. It's been around for about 30 years or so. People who work with that unit know about the unit. Nobody else on campus seems to know about this, this program. Um, and if you go on their website and look at everything that they provide to researchers and educators, they almost have homegrown frameworks on how to develop broader impact activities and broader impact plans. If it's here at LSU, I'm pretty sure it's also something similar also exists at your institution. So I would recommend you going out um, if you're interested in supporting broader impact um, statement drafting um, at your institution to see what resources are already out there. We can also provide information about resources to guide the development of broader impact plans. This goes back to that statement um, earlier in the chat box about gathering information um, in one place on a web page, um, possibly in a research guide to help researchers do their work. 
And then we can train researchers on using Web of Science and other search tools that allow results to be filtered by funding agency. And this is actually a strategy that I came up with on the fly when I was working last semester with a group of graduate students who were going to apply for the NSF Graduate Fellowship Program. So graduate students and some undergraduate researchers have the opportunity to submit proposals to NSF. Um, you can submit once, and if you were awarded, that's great. If you're not awarded, you I don't think you can submit again, if I'm remembering the rules correctly. So it is pretty high stakes for these students. They are, you know, very much invested in, you know, learning how to write these grants while they're still graduate students. So they get, you know, that experience before they become faculty members themselves. And I had a question from a student in astrophysics and, you know, she just, she looked absolutely just confused about how her research was going to be translatable to a public audience. And, you know, she explained her research to me, you know, in my limited knowledge, I did not quite understand what she was talking about, but I came up with this idea that we could start using her topic of research as a search term in Web of Science and then filter out the results based on funding agency and come up with a list of articles that have been produced by researchers who'd been awarded NSF grants. Because my logic is, well, if they'd been awarded NSF grants, then their broader impact plans had to be, you know, evaluated as, you know, potentially useful. And I told her, I said, you can get the contact information of these researchers, you know, from their articles and, you know, reach out to them and say, tell me about your broader impact plans. How did you come up with it? How did you translate your research that you do every single day into something that you could communicate to a non-specialist audience? So I shared that with some faculty members and they thought it was uh, something interesting to try. So um, I hope you do as well. If you have success with, success with it at your institution, please let me know. Um, I would love to hear if, you know, this is as good a strategy as I currently think it is. So I would like to share some resources with you. Um, that may help you develop web pages or help you assist faculty in developing web pages supporting broader impacts. So I mentioned earlier the National Association for Broader Impacts. Um, it's an organization, I believe, that initially started at the University of Missouri and it's now a large sort of consortial collective of research institutions within the United States. And they are developing guiding principles. These guiding principles are important because not only do they provide guidance for evaluators of grant proposals, they can also serve as guiding questions for researchers developing broader impacts. And you should be able to see the PDF of the document on the shared screen in Adobe Connect. And you'll see that the document gives you a broad overview of what a broader impact goal target audience could be. And then it starts listing questions. Things like, what is the potential for the proposed activity to benefit society and contribute to achievement of specific desired societal outcomes? To what extent do the proposed activities suggest and explore creative, originally, or potentially transformative concepts? And then they give you some sub-questions so that you have a better idea of what that question is asking. And so this can help focus researchers. It can help them break down the basic research that they're doing and apply it in a broader, scalable way to specific audiences for specific purposes. Another resource um, that's available is the connector. This is at the University of Missouri. 
Um, it is specifically about broader impacts and engaged scholarship. Um, and there's just tons of information here on this website, including success stories, including, you know, researchers being reflective about the broader impact activities that they have um, followed through with as they were awarded their grants. LSU Libraries has developed a LibGuide specifically on broader impact statements. Um, you are more than welcome to use it for your own purposes at your institution. Uh, read through it, be creative, take what works for you, leave what doesn't. And in all of my sort of vetting of resources that are listed in this LibGuide, probably the most useful and most fun resource is the COSI Broader Impacts Wizard. I love this resource. You can sign up for a free account. Um, it was developed by the Centers for Ocean Sciences Education Excellence. When you sign up for a free account, what it does is it takes you through the entire draft of a broader impact plan. And so you'll see I created sort of a fake um, broader impact plan back on September 27th of 2018. I call it attack of the feral pigs. It's a problem here in Louisiana. It may be a problem where you currently live, um, but I use that as my example um, when working with some faculty. And it takes you through every single step you can choose the agency that you are applying um, for funding here. You know, it's not just NSF, there's also NIH, there's also a few other agencies that are listed here. And that's so that when you get to the end of every single step in the wizard, it will generate the report in the format particular to that proposal. It's pretty nifty. Um, and as you go through each step, you're, you can view videos um, about scientists, you know, talking about their research and how they connected their research um, to their target audiences. There's definitions about each type of target audience. And then you can choose an audience with which to work. And this can help, you know, it can help in the drafting of the plan. I chose industry for my audience. And then you fill out every single box. You answer each question. My science is relative is relevant to this audience because, and this helps the scientists draft, you know, their their plan and, and show how their work connects with a specific audience. And so at the end of um, of doing all of these steps, you will get to the summary, and then you can generate your report and copy and paste it into your full grant proposal. So those are the resources that I have for you. Um, not extensive. The extensive list is going to be on the LibGuide that I showed you. Um, I think another thing that may be useful for your researchers to look at are science communication journals. Um, just so that they can see that there is a discipline that's specifically devoted to communicating science to non-science audiences. Um, and that discipline, you know, of just sort of public communication, science communication can get very, very um, specific, you know, health communication, uh, you know, public understanding of science. There's tons of ways um, that communications researchers are looking at communicating with the public about science. So with that, does anybody have any questions about what I've shown you or any questions about the broader impact statement in general or NSF grant support?
you're very welcome. Please mine that LibGuide um, for everything that's in there. Uh, it is constantly being updated because I am, you know, sort of a perpetual student on this topic. Um, and I think as more organizations like Navi um, start making an impact over the next couple of years, we're going to see more portals to information like this popping up all over the place. Okay, so here's a question. One faculty member that has talked to me about it admitted that um, broader impact is the last part of the grant proposal that they complete. Do you have any thoughts on ways to help faculty not leave it till the 11th hour? Um, I don't. I think it's going to be like like the literature review um, for scientists in a lot of ways. It's, it's the thing that they don't want to write because they're so comfortable just writing, you know, the rest of the, you know, MRD format, uh, you know, of their articles, and they're going to, you know, save the literature review last because that's just the thing that they just really don't want to do. Um, I do think, though, that getting scientists and researchers to understand that that this broader impact statement is, is not just something that's been tacked on to NSF grant proposals, that it is 50% of how they will be evaluated on their work might encourage them not to put it off until the last minute. Um, and if they start thinking about it earlier, you know, of course, that gives them more time to reach out to other potential collaborators, which will make their grant more attractive um, and more potentially successful in being awarded than having fewer collaborators. You know, that interdisciplinarity, I think, is something that NSF is really trying to push um, and, and, you know, all of that collaboration. Another issue that's mentioned um, in the broader impact wizard in a video, uh, it was mentioned by an evaluator for NSF who said that the one thing that he frequently looks for in grant proposals is the budget attached to the broader impact plan. And if he sees that that budget is not workable, that they're just not investing enough resources into the broader in impact plan, he is likely not to move the grant proposal forward for award. And so I think science, you know, researchers and faculty just need to become more aware of how these grant proposals are evaluated, and that may also encourage them to not put off broader impact statements to, you know, the last minute. But those are just my thoughts. Does anybody else have any, you know, tips or ideas that they might want to throw out there regarding nudging faculty to take this a bit more, well, I don't want to say seriously, but to put a bit more investment in the broader impact criterion? Okay, well, if there are no other questions or comments, I want to thank you again for joining me. Um, and please reach out to me if you have any questions um, after the presentation. I would love to connect with you and to uh, think about this uh, topic more deeply. Well, thank you, Christina. That was a really great, um, it was a great presentation. Um, the record, which was recorded, I apologize, y'all. I've lost my ability to speak. Um, and if you ever want to revisit, you can do so at the um, Information Literacy 
LibGuide, and I've gone ahead and put a link in the chat to our archive of chats. So you, um, once this one has been, the recording has been delivered to me, this will be posted online, and you'll be able to uh, check it out along with any of our other previous chats. So thank you for coming, everyone, and I hope everyone enjoyed the chat.